Hello and welcome to this conversation at Ahval and Hot Pursuit. Uh, for the listeners, uh, we are going to analyze, uh, put uh, light on Libya. Uh, it's the growing saga. Possibly, according to the analysis, it's the beginning of the of the Libya saga. International uh, guardians not at the moment, involving mainly Turkey as the main actor, but also involving more than seven, eight nations, including Egypt, Tunisia, Greece, Cyprus, France, Italy, Russia, United States of America, even more. But uh, we will try to keep it in that context with uh, my colleague uh, Cengiz Akhtar, columnist with Ahval. Hello, Cengiz. Hello, Yavuz. Now, uh, we can begin with uh, the sort of de describing the gravity of the situation, because uh, as uh, you and I uh, quite clearly see, there is at least, to say the least, the confusion in the, mm -hmm. in the analysis and observations on the, on the conflict, which has been proving for, for a long time, even before the COVID-19 uh, epidemic hit the, hit the globe. And this was some, somehow a crisis that screamed that it was coming. And it developed into something huge at the moment. It snowballed into something that is uh, not comparable to any other conflict because it is uh, encompassing the entire East Mediterranean basin. And uh, we forgot also the Israel also could be included in the nations that... that, uh, that and Greece. Greece, I mentioned already. Yep. Um, so uh, the everything has to do with the changes, radical changes and shifts in the paradigm of Turkish foreign policy. And we can begin with a, a quote that I am sure most of the international observers have not been aware of, um, because uh, I haven't seen any English translation of it anywhere. It's by a statement, recent statement by Devlet Bahçeli, the leader of the ultranationalistic MHP party, who is the main partner of, of Erdogan government. And if you ask me, de facto president of Turkey, because he is calling the shots at the moment. Hey. And what Bahçeli said, I'm quoting, everyone should know that the Turkish nation, if it is pushed into a self-isolation or a retreat, and also to an indifference to the development in its vicinity, it will cause irreparable risks for our homeland in the mid and long run. And he continues, quote, the ultimate defense line of the homeland shall have to begin with the thresholds defined in the map of national oath or national pact, Misaka Milli. If Turkey makes any concessions from its rights, its thesis, and its ideals, it will mean making all of them debatable, open to debate. The sole ground for our presence in the adjacent territories and countries is the interpretation, our interpretation, he means, of our national security and international law. Let it be known by everyone that if we ever retreat from those areas across our borders, if we buckle under the threats, Turkish homelands will be subject to simultaneous attacks by the traitors and oppressors. I think this, in a nutshell, summarizes of, of uh, current Turkey's outlook to the immediate region, uh, I think. Now we have Libya. And uh, I know that you are following a Libyan conflict on a day-by-day basis. Where are we at, at the latest? And what kind of conclusions we can draw, what to make out of this one? I think what you have quoted from uh, Devlet Bahçeli, who is uh, de facto uh, number two of the regime, if not number one, uh, as you put it, uh, it's, it's very evocative, I think. Uh, it's an old theory. I mean, the, the best defense is the offensive action. And this is where Turkey is to, to, to today. The problem is that Turkey mm. has many neighbors and many neighborhoods. Uh, and uh, I'm afraid the Turkish capabilities, be it military of, or financial, don't allow 
that many fronts. So Libya is one of the, these fronts, a, new, uh, a relatively new one. Syria is another one. Iraq is another one. There are prospective fronts in uh, Cyprus, Eastern Mediterranean, and the Aegean. And um, frankly, uh, that gives the impression that, that this is a country uh, which aims at, uh, at what it doesn't have the means uh, and capabilities of controlling at the end of the day. And this is where we are, not only in Syria, but also in Libya. So uh, there has been uh, major developments the last one month and a half. Uh, in the on the terrain on the on the fi- in the field uh, in uh, the field of operations actually in Libya, and um, and it's growing by the day now. Uh, uh, one uh, f- very first observation is that Turkey, Turkish officials, and uh, pro-Turkish uh, international press. Uh, be it from the Arab world or elsewhere, uh, are systematically talking. Whereas the uh, the opponents, I mean, those who don't agree with uh, with the the way Turkey is conducting its operations and dealing with the uh, Tripoli government, uh, mainly uh, Russia, France, Egypt, and United Arab Emirates. Maybe we can add to it uh, many others and to start with Saudi Arabia. They don't talk as much uh, as, to, as uh, t- uh, Turkey or pro-Turks. And that tells a lot. I mean, it means that, 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 that I think um, uh, now um, they have crossed the uh, Rubicon. Uh, and you think uh, so? they, they, they crossed the Rubicon, you think? I think they crossed the Rubicon because, I mean, they keep saying that we will uh, take uh, Sirte. Um, and who said that? Erdogan himself said, said that. I mean, this is in terms of international relations and diplomatic uh, 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 habits uh, of, the, of today's world. Uh, it's very, very unusual. I mean, you... Uh, any country can conclude a bilateral or, or multilateral defense agreement with with uh, with some with other countries, but I mean that doesn't allow uh, these uh, contractor countries to speak on the name of the of the contracting country, and, and this, this is uh, unseen. In the, in the diplomacy. I'll give you an example of Russia, for instance. I mean, Russia is, has a, a, a military defense agreement with uh, Damascus. Have you ever heard any Russian official talking about taking Idlib, for instance? It doesn't exist because it cannot exist because it's absurd. I mean, that, of course, exposed Turkey and many people uh, in the world to today, be it you know aware or, or unaware of what is really happening in uh, in Libya, uh, well, uh, the, the people tell Turkey, ask them themselves, are you intending to invade Libya? <laughs> this is this is where we are. Okay, but let's go deeper into this. I think the what uh, one may call. Um, these these conflicts that are sort of uh, expanded upon by Turkey, uh, particularly Libya, but also Syria, but Libya now most of all, and East Med, um, they are tightly linked to the Turkish domestic politics. So they are uh, the, the the reason why they are so loudly repeated every day by by Bahçeli or by by Erdogan or their spokesperson or their media has to do, of course, with the, with the political engineering dimension of it, because they need uh, this uh, reinvented and reproduced national rhetoric every day. This is part of the Turkish political reality, whether one accepts it or not. It is there. But um, uh, this explains uh, automatically what uh, one faces, what you criticize 
what as different from uh, Lavrov or Putin or any other any other leader uh, in, in in the similar contexts. Turkish leaders are in desperate need for this this nationalist uh, reproduction uh, of of rhetoric, uh, linked also with uh, expansion uh, and expans expansive moves, expansionist moves. But um, we have also a red line, which you can discuss uh, whether it's the, whether one passed the Rubicon or not. The red line is a red line drawn between G Sirte and Jufra, as emphasized in the ceasefire declaration uh, by Egypt. So Egypt's conditionality is if you come near and try to cross that, if you take over Sirte, it will be sort of a casus belli or reason for, for uh, Egyptian forces also entering into the theater with, with full force. But mean, at, the mean, at the same time, there are other uh, mechanisms triggered now, Genghis, uh, because as we said in the beginning, this is only the initial phases of, of this management of this conflict. Uh, for example, there is, as you observed, uh, pressure from the American side or international side to Saraj government to dismantle and dissolve uh, what many see as uh, bundles of of mercenaries, jihadist mercenaries exported from from Turkey by Turkey from Syria, and this puts another dimension into this. And uh, American pressure is there. France's disgruntlement is there. So what what do we make of this? This, uh, I mean, this that, 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 there are too many things. I mean, here let let, let me start with the uh, with the, the Turkey unchecked. I call it Turkey unchecked. Mm. So I think, uh, you know, this need for foreign action um, uh, to, to hide what is really happening in the country and to play the nationalist card, because after all, the Turkish public opinion, be it pro-regime or against the regime, is, is very happy uh, to see the Turkish uh, victorious armies uh, running around the world. Uh, so this is one element, but I mean, uh, in the meantime, when you are uh, so overconfident, you start to make mistakes. And, uh, and one of the biggest mistakes that they have done, these guys in Ankara, is to export the, uh, the uh, jihadists or the Muslim terrorists, let's call the cat a cat, uh, to, from Syria to Libya, because in Syria they were unchecked, and until today they are unchecked. No one tells Turkey, hey, what are you doing with all these terrorists? Uh, you know, uh, to the contrary, I mean, the, uh, the dire state of the United States administration uh, gives Turkey all sorts of hopes and green lights in Syria. They thought they could continue with this in Libya. And that was, I think, where the, uh, they made a big mistake. I have the following reading regarding Libya. Frankly, uh, under the international rules, if Turkey would have concluded you know, a military defense uh, and cooperation agreement with the Tripoli government, like uh, Russia with the Damascus uh, government, or like France with the uh, Mali government, for instance. I mean, frankly, and, and send, uh, according to this agreement, Turkish soldiers, but real Turkish soldiers, to Libya. No one, I mean, we wouldn't arrive there uh, where we are to, to today. No one could, could have challenged this. And uh, basically, I mean, there would have been other problems, but not this one. Be because today, the bottom line of all this debate about what Turkey is doing in Libya is the presence of tens of thousands of jihadists or Muslim terrorists in, uh, in the western part of the country by the Tunisian border, by the uh, Algerian border, because the, Libya has also a border with Algeria. 
mm-hmm. in the south, of course. And uh, so, and this is the bottom line. And uh, this is also the bottom line for Egypt. This is also a bottom line for Europe. I mean, no one among the, the, these three or four, you know, one group and, uh, and three uh, neighboring countries of Libya could accept the presence. It's not, it's not even the case of Muslim Brotherhood. It's more than that. Of, of Muslim jihadis in their neighborhood. This is the bottom line. And this is the message, actually, Sisi, uh, Abdul Fattah al-Sisi, the, uh, the Putschist ruler, the Putschist ruler and president of Egypt. I mean, he's not, uh, he's, uh, he's far from being, a, you know, a Democrat. And, uh, but nevertheless, he was clear enough uh, I think that that was a week ago, who said that, that this is unacceptable for us and uh, we will go for it. So I think uh, uh, where we are to today, um, there are some symbolic uh, deadlines, uh, that, uh, like the 15th of July, the so-called coup d'etat's uh, fourth uh, anniversary. Uh, yep, and uh, uh, those who follow uh, the military matters in Turkey expect uh, a military move uh, before that uh, to take, uh, conquer, actually, mm. Sirte and Jufra. And uh, we will see how it will develop. But in the meantime, uh, the others are not just uh, waiting uh, for uh, Turkey, I think we should say Turkey now, Turkey and its jihadists uh, to, to move. Uh, President Macron is expected in uh, Moscow to, to meet President Putin. Uh, there, um, the, the, there are all sorts of uh, military activity uh, towards uh, C- Citre, uh, Sirte and uh, Jufra, and, uh, and Egypt is uh, getting ready. Um, mm. So I think um, um, we are uh, we are in a waiting mood now. Um, but in terms that... of the agenda, there is now a pending, uh, perhaps prospective move within the United Nations uh, Security Council, perhaps. Of course, uh, I mean, and are... also yeah. there are some moves within NATO, which is less significant, I think. Because yeah. Security Council, its moves will matter uh, if it does move. You know, b- before it comes to the Security Council in in uh, in, in form of uh, of a, a new uh, Libya resolution, frankly, I mean, the message of the world after the so-called Cairo Declaration by uh, the government of Egypt was, uh, was uh, you know, very sound and clear. And uh, the entire world, including China, has called upon the parties, Tobruk, Benghazi on the one hand, Trablus, uh, Tripoli on the other hand, to, uh, to seize the fire. Mm-hmm. And uh, what was the answer of, the, uh, of uh, Tripoli? Uh, Tripoli rejected this call, uh, rejected to attend the Arab League meeting, and on the name of Tripoli, Turkey also talked and uh, said it is unacceptable to, to continue and we will continue until, until we, we take Sirte. This is what I was mentioning in the beginning. You don't do this kind of things in the international the diplomacy, you know. But anyhow, there is no diplomacy. So I think uh, the uh, the heavy weight is uh, definitely Egypt, who shares uh, the, the more than one thousand kilometer of border with Libya, and. Uh, uh, According to some uh, uh, you know, recent information that I gathered, uh, uh, Sisi was waiting for the finalization of a 6.5 billion loan from IMF. Mm-hmm. And that, that happened uh, la- uh, last week. And he feels more uh, confident. You know, confident and free now. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that's the first uh, element. And the second element, 
which is in directly in connection with uh, with the fuss in Libya, is uh, the uh, next uh, agreement between Greece and uh, Egypt regarding the delimitation of the uh, of the uh, exclusive economic zones of the two countries. That will uh, that is expected not no, no later than. Uh, mid-August, apparently, so one month and a half from now, and that will have, of course, a tremendous effect on the on the so-called memorandum between Ankara and uh, Tripoli, mm-hmm. uh, with this tangent, you know, which goes from the Turkish coasts to Tripoli, which which is the in the it's unique in the in the annals of uh, the UNCLOS. The 1982 uh, international agreement on the delimitation of the uh, EEZs in the world. Uh, so that will cut the, this Turkish Libyan tangent completely, you know, the, the Greek uh, Egyptian um, uh, agreement. So, uh, uh, all in all, I think if we uh, try to sum up. Uh, what is at stake to, to today? Some people think, and I also tend to think, uh, on behalf of the Turkish regime, that that they may expect, you know, to uh, to become the game maker in Libya by invading Sirte and Jujufra, so to control the Libyan oil. I I checked. The uh, international companies present in the mm. in the uh, uh, in the in the, the country. Field. Yes, the biggest, of course, is any any of Italy, by far. I mean, uh, it's really huge uh, stakes in Lib- Libya. Total, the French company, uh, Conoco Phillips, the U.S. company, Spain's Repsol is there too. Austria's OMV is there. Norway's uh, State Oil. Ekinor, it's the, the new name, and uh, Rosneft of Russia. So, and then the Turkish uh, petroleum is not there, for instance. Mm-hmm. So, uh, why I'm saying this? Because, you know, even if you control Sirte, these companies have, uh, you know, uh, clear cut agreements with the government, with the government of, uh, of Libya. I mean, mm-hmm. in, for the matter is uh, the Tripoli government. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one can challenge uh, unless uh, this challenger expects to pay uh, hundreds of billions of, uh, you know, liabilities and, uh, and uh, you know, penal- penalties uh, <laughs> to these companies and uh, to get rid of the concessions that these companies have already you know, with the national oil company of Libya. That's the, uh, the, the first thing. The second point is, I would like to repeat this, because in Ankara, uh, many people don't get this. Uh, you know, the bottom line of the, the entire fuss, I repeat, the chaos that is ongoing in the, in the country, is the presence of the, of the mainly Syrian uh, uh, mercenaries, uh, otherwise, the uh, the jihadis and the Muslim terrorists. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are already acting in the in the towns that are they have recaptured, like Tarhuna, for instance, which is completely destroyed. And uh, this and has they are not... allegedly coordinated by 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 Turkish officers or That's paramilitary it. groups, such as. As, as reported, as and, America, and the United States, United States is putting heavy pressure now uh, by virtue of the Skirat Agreement uh, under the security arrangements, uh, Article 35, which clearly says that whatever the, the security concerns of the country could be, it is not allowed to uh, cooperate or protect uh, uh, jihadis, uh, uh, jihadi groups, as listed by the UN Security Council, and it, it quotes Al Qaeda, ISIS, and Al Ansar, who are all present today in Tripoli. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, we'll uh, have to add also that it seems at the moment, uh, mm-hmm. again, back to Security Council. Uh, 
four of the five permanents uh, are seem to be more or less in agreement about the uh, pressure on through ceasefire, which is mm -hmm. China, France, uh, Russia, UK. Uh, UK. Uh, UK, UK, USA. Uh, oh, you, is, is, UK is, is still a, is a murky uh, is is murky at the, in this game oh, because. Uh, but uh, as it seems, it, it may reach a consensus uh, again. Uh, that been being said, uh, again, another obscure point, seemingly obscure point, which might be added in the, in the, in the bigger picture is uh, maybe it is not yet clearly understood by the Western observers is in the, and also part, it's, it's, it's a major factor in the game making of Ankara is that the claims of, of Erdogan and what he represents and what he wants to continue to represent is as, as the lead force of the um, waning, uh, declining uh, Muslim Brotherhood uh, 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 stream, uh, I, globally I, speaking. I, you know, I call it Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood International. Uh, this was uh, uh, quite, uh, seemed quite promising uh, yep. during the Arab awakening, uh, but uh, as we see now, let's face the facts, it could never have a foothold in Iraq because of the construction and constellations in Iraq. It tried an experiment in, in Syria, but it, it imploded or it was exploded or, or destroyed uh, for, for a long time. And Russian presence is there, there, and also Assad presence and Russian presence combined is making it nearly uh, impossible for, for a revival. But this doesn't mean uh, that the Muslim Brotherhood ideals, Ikhwanism, uh, you know, political Islam, uh, you know, as a sort of a one party regime uh, ideal is not going to be revived elsewhere. So what we see is a shift of the ground or territory in the leadership, persistent leadership of Erdogan towards Libya. That's there, you know, among other things, that's where he sees uh, uh, his chances uh, of, of, of leading uh, such a movement or being uh, a sort of a, a carrier of, of such a movement. This is something that's not really clearly seen by, by, by Europe. Uh, if you want to analyze this, you have to put this in the, in the bigger picture. Because if Erdogan is successful, which is still 50-50 if you ask me, then you will have a very strong presence of a, a, a sort of a jihadi regime southern, on the southern borders of, of, of uh, European Union. And, and this will have also an impact and consequences towards the south, towards the inner sides of Africa, and also Egypt, as you clearly uh, made you know we, we made it clear why ICC is so uh, so um, uh, you know firm in 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 his in his uh, standing because he does not want to see uh, another Ikhwan movement uh, coming in and tr starting to rise again. So this is where the stakes are. Uh, you know to put it objectively, this is what Erdogan wants. Frankly, he wants. Yes. He wants. And this wants. is what France doesn't want. This is what Greece is worried about, Israel too. Uh, and uh, this is what especially Trump knows nothing about. This is where the US non-policy is. I think, Cengiz, if the history is written, when the history is written in the future, and if this conflict blows up to something unmanageable, one way or another, all blame Will be, will be put on Trump because for Erdogan to be successful, Erdogan and Bahçeli in this policy, uh, it will have to have a continuity in, in Trump's indecisive, ignorant uh, viewpoint on, on Libya. And Erdogan takes advantage of that. The timing of Libyan conflict and uh, explosion or, or blow up, blowing up of in, in Libyan conflict is, is, is synchronized clearly with the, NATO. With the way Trump uh, behaves uh, or not behaves. Uh, he will be the culprit 
in the future if something really unmanageable happens in terms of Libyan crisis? Well, I'm, I'm not an expert on, uh, on military matters, thank God. But uh, uh, as I see it, I mean, uh, frankly, objectively speaking, I don't think uh, uh, Ankara regime has got any chance to settle in uh, northern Africa. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it will, it will end up really badly. And I'm actually expecting, you know, a fiasco in Libya for mm. the Ankara regime might even imply, might even, even mean the end of this regime. This is definitely in the cards. This is one of the possibilities. So what I'm expecting, actually, Turkey, at the end of the day, sooner or later, will have to live with its uh, dear jihadists that, that it's feeding since years, since uh, at least 2013 14. So it's, it's more than six, six, six years. So these guys, in the tens of thousands of them, including Turks among them, many, you know, they will, the only place they will, uh, you know, they, they, they will uh, go or they could go will be Turkey. And Turkey will have to deal with it. And uh, because these, you know, when we talk about uh, the vicinity of Europe, we should, I repeat, talk also about the vicinity of the neighboring countries of Libya. Mind you, in the mid-90s, Algeria, uh, you know, Algeria, uh, uh, it was a horrible, you know, uh, civil war where mm -hmm. 150,000 people was killed at least in a very, sh uh, the, you know, short time, few months, actually. And that was, again, that was the first anti uh, ihwan anti muslim brotherhood uh, you know war by uh, you know uh, a north african country so uh, algeria is still there tunisia we we know how the things are developing and also they are deadly uh, you know afraid of what is happening in their vicinity and um, uh, and and egypt so i think and plus for europe i mean italy france spain i mean this is really uh, a mission impossible for uh, Mr. Bacheli and Mr. Erdogan. Um, at the same time, uh, this is, I think, what I see as the most adventurous move uh, by, by yep. Turkish government, by any Turkish government, uh, set aside mm -hmm. 1974 because it was a very limited action in Cyprus, uh, comparable to 1914 decision to take, to drag yep. Turkey the late Ottoman Empire into the First World War. Right. Uh, this was a, a period, that was a period of uh, extreme adventurism out of despair. And now there are similarities uh, again uh, with, this, uh, with that one. Uh, and it's, um, uh, it goes under the banner. I think it's a quite a passing expression that was ex established by Ilhan Uzgel. Uh, impressive article, actually, he wrote, and he says, military first, like uh, America first. He was making some sort of uh, uh, comparison to, to or relation to, to that ex expression. Military okay. first is the banner. And he's also using quite a uh, useful expression, actually, uh, to define the, the current foreign policy of Turkey as forward defense. Uh, it's, it's, yes, it's, it I goes, said. I think, in line with what Bahçeli is trying to tell the world in despair, because the world doesn't listen to what he says. But he's a man of his word, and uh, he's, he's calling the shots, as I said. Forward defense is, is there. No, uh, the, the, and, um, it's called that, the, the best defense is the offense. It's called uh, the, yes, this, the best this is the what makes adventurism so visible at the moment Indeed. and also linked to an agenda uh, as you know the, the July agenda is going to be filled with uh, with such elements such as Hagia Sophia uh, perhaps being converted into a mosque in the beginning of in the coming days actually maybe and also the uh, what you mentioned anniversary of of the attempted coup uh, fourth anniversary which, of course, will be filled with symbolism, maybe also with expectations, because what we've been 
hearing lately, I mean, the, in the past 48 hours or so, there is an offensive being prepared uh, against Sirte. And one of them uh, who uh, expresses this or uh, expression to this one is a former officer turned columnist Metin Yurjan. He says, uh, and I read it, despite ceasefire calls from Moscow and others, uh, Ankara's operational preparations suggest that its allies in Libya might attempt to advance towards Sirte and Al Jufra in the second half of July. But again, uh, what you said, uh, Turkey's capabilities, its inability uh, or incompetence uh, maybe to, to establish a foothold in, in Africa, to expand there, uh, is there as well and is being uh, touched upon by by meeting Yurjan as well in the in the in the article and he, he says uh, uh, a failure to match military efforts with diplomacy could prevent operational achievements from translating into sustainable diplomatic gains uh, and says which means there is a fight going on in Ankara uh, many in Ankara have come to question to what extent the ailing Turkish economy could sustain costly military ventures abroad and the defense industry, a concern that bears directly on Ankara's military activism in, in Libya. Maybe this could be a good point to conclude our, our chat about, about Libyan crisis. Uh, this is a very critical uh, junction that Turkey finds itself in. Nothing to add. Okay. No, of <laughs> course so I have, we can... I have millions of th th things to add, but uh, no, I think one. We can uh, take it up in our next conversation. We of will, course, we will uh, but cover, I mean, ju just one point. I mean, th this will be uh, one of the subjects of my future articles in Ahval. Actually, uh, contrary to the past period, uh, I mean, before uh, the uh, present regime, you know, Turkey's. Uh, foreign uh, one of the Turkey's foreign policy mottos was peace at home, peace abroad. abroad. So this is over, and Turkish society is it, it's not only the uh, the foreign policy. The entire Turkey, entire Turkish polity, as we call it, and the the uh, and the Turkish economy uh, is militarizing you know the turkish militarization uh, you know it really sounds like uh, the post versailles militarization of of germany after 1919 and everybody should be aware of that especially the arms dealers to start with germany and italy and spain who are happily selling arms and very high tech uh, you know, military material to Ankara. We can continue, go on, 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 but uh, let's let's keep other aspects to our next conversation about Libyan crisis. Cengiz Akhtar, thank you for this conversation.